Okay. So this is a sample. If we're going into the second part of the lecture this morning, or the session, and this is actually a past paper from about six years ago. You can see 2010. It's not there, but it's a 2010 exam paper, right? Uh, one of those old papers that you should be able to get online. So I'll just go through this paper so that you have an idea of the possible structure of the type of paper, particularly as I'm saying to you, questions are going to be interrelated and interlinked, right? Um, so you would have, if I look, for example, question one, it looks at, and look at the language of what it is saying, right? Uh, remember the point I made, your, your, your questions are not going to be just traditional essay questions. So it says, given the following ratios, conduct a comprehensive sensitivity analysis of ratios in each category as identified in the ratio, financial ratio table to produce a short document which you want to share with the client, to share with the client. So you're a consultant. Be succinct while still ensuring that the key points are included in your document, right? And this is what we went through last time. So that's what, similar language. Of course, the question is going to be different. Now, the point I wanted to make from last week, you, when you look at the first column, it deals with growth rates. Right? This is the one that will tell you about the actual profit margin, whether net or profit. But this one actually just deals with growth rates. That meaning from year one to two, or from month one to month 12, and then year two, month one, it is just showing you over a five year period what kind of growth occurred in the business. Right? So I might have inaccurately given the impression that this specific, this was net income. This is what speaks to your profitability, looking at your gross profit and your net profit. And you would have your year to date sales quarter versus your whole quarter. But I think I repeat, I might have given the impression this was really net income or a net profit. This just speaks about growth rates. And I normally, in exam, still set up columns that you can see this speaks to growth rates, whereas this speaks to profit margins, right? So I know some of you might be listening to the lecture. When I, I listen back to it, and I say, oh my gosh, no. I, I might have given the impression when we looked at growth rates that we were actually talking about profitability. So when you are speaking about profitability, this is the section you look at for your margins for profitability. When you want to see the growth rates for a five-year period, or growth rate from one year quarter to the next quarter, that's the first column. So I, I just wanted to clarify that point so that I don't mislead anyone. Right. So let me show you a second question. Um, right. CEFI, that's the company, is desirous of establishing a strategic alliance with an international food company. Your task as consultant is to analyze the company and recommend the appropriate strategies to the board. That is whether the company, um, whether the company may be a feasible investment. Given the following IFE matrix, critically analyze the statistics and comment on the ratings and score for the company. Right? So this is not an essay question. As I said, in the exam, the language would change. But in most of your questions, you're a consultant. So, isn't, so you cannot prepare the questions in advance. Right? You could be home, I can learn, I will learn EFE, I can learn CEM. You can't learn in advance. What you can do in advance is what you were doing all along. Just practicing, looking at linkages and relationships, so you understand the concept. But I'm, I guarantee you, once you understand the concept, you, don't, you can go in the exam, and it's easy for you, because there is not an answer. Because when you look at this, different students will highlight different things. I just am looking for your ability to interpret, analyze the matrix, and make recommendations. And again, students will make all diverse recommendations. My concern is not about whether your recommendation is a right recommendation. It is whether you thought through it analytically and can justify the recommendation you are making based on concepts. You understand what I'm saying? So you could argue this relates to the RBV because, and I just want to know your thinking, and that's where you'll get your marks for that, right? And this is just an example of the IFE. Let's look at the CPM as a strategic consultant. You see the third question. And in all of these questions so far, you're a consultant. You're not a student. It's not about writing essays. You see the point I'm making? It's not about essays. You are to advise the CEO on board on the competitive position and profile of Kigal Inc. 
and then thought it was actually Kellogg. And I had actually looked at the, I actually looked at this in a class like this. I looked at the whole Kellogg case and all the all these matrices I looked at in the class, and I brought it back. I just changed the name from Kellogg to Key Gog. And a student came out here because I'm a same Dr. Corbin. You know, I got mixed up. So I actually started to call this thing Kellogg, but I forgot that it was a different company. <laughs> I laughed. It was actually the same company. I just changed some of the numbers in the tables, but it was the same company. I wonder if I did it again. <laughs> Time is of essence to senior executives, so only write the key points you would want to share with the board. Appreciating, you can't write everything. Yeah? So this is what it is. So I want you to look at the language. Look at the language that we're using here. Um, and I'm doing this, you look at, and I word my questions very carefully. I'm saying time is of essence because I don't want you to go in there pretending that you could answer. If you go in there pretending that you can write on one, two, three, four, five, six, and all of these columns in 30 something minutes for one question, you would never finish. So that's why I said time is of essence. You want a quick response. Be succinct, get to the point, and analyze. So let me bring back the question, right? And then you see, you would, as we said before, when we are analyzing these matrices, like the CPM, where do you begin? You begin with the weight. Why do you begin with the weight? Sorry? It looks at the importance of a particular key or critical success factor. So in this case, which ones do we begin? We focus on critically. We focus on market share. We focus on financial position. Those are the two most critical ones that you pay particular attention to. And then what you do? In analyzing a, a CPM, you have your weight that shows importance. You look at Kellogg's weighting. You look at Mill's weighting. Cortexy weighting, and uh, you make a decision. You rate it, sorry. You make a decision. They're all performing equally. You look at the price, all performing nearly equally. And the only differential here now is that Cortexy, um, and this was actually PepsiCo that it changed around. Um, so you can see three PepsiCo seems to be performing better. So they're generally performing almost equally. It's just one or two areas where Pepsi seems to stand out. And you look at your weighted scores, and you then come to a decision um, in terms of your analysis. So in this particular question, it asks you to make comment on the profile of Kigal Link. If I say to you, make recommendations to Kegali on the company it might consider integrating with, it shifts it in a different direction. You understand what I'm saying? So I also want you to look at what, as you analyze a matrix, how you could also make recommendations. So what stands out, just quickly tell me what stands out in this CPM for Kegal A. Somebody, just tell me, one person, tell me what stands out in this, this CPM, if you had to analyze it. One male, one female. Let's go ahead. No, what's the error he made? What's the error he made? No, he defined the fourth principle I said just now. What's the principle I established? Look at the highest weight. What are the highest weight? Market share and financial position. He, you want to tell me to you folks? So he's going to the third best weight. So I'm saying to you, follow the principle. Start with the most important. 25 means this is very important. So he's not wrong. He's not wrong, but you still haven't dealt with the most critical success factors for the company. 
So when you're advising management, you're not giving management the best advice. You're giving them partial advice. You understand? So if you start there, it means in the exam at some point, he still has to go back and deal with the highest rate. So for you, if you're good, you can deal with all your notes. You're fast. You understand? But if you start here, and you start here and here, but you still need to deal with the most important, management is saying to you, advise me. So if you haven't dealt with the two most important factors in the company, which should be in terms of the industry, market share and financial position, you really not have to advise me properly. You understand what I'm saying? So start with the most important bit that in case you run out of time, at least I have advised my company in on the most important factors, which is market share. And what it says for market share, what does it tell you when you look at market share for all three of these companies? Huh? So what does it tell you? What does it tell you? Competition is real intense. So you understand competition is real intense. So when I look here now, you see when I told you he's a link, because the same company, you see, you all realize that everything is the same company. It all is just a case that broken up intersections. So when you look now at the metrics, you're talking about market share, rapid market share versus low market share. And look where the market thing is. You understand? It is not higher up, which means the market is tight. It's not in rapid growth. Which means the point then that about the competition is so intense, everybody is grabbling for market share, which has implications for your efficiency and for your effectiveness and for your sales and everything. Because the market is tight. You understand? It nearly to it nearly to the point of you see the y-axis? Everybody sees that? If it was further up there, really, this is a high growth market. But it says that this is a mature market. And these three big players here are in intense competition. Hence, what do you need to pay particular attention to? Since competition is so intense, there are a whole set of things you can pay attention to. Product development, or the cost. Library and mom competing firms, what else you want to pay attention to? Who said that? You better believe it. You've got to pay attention to cost because once you can pay attention to cost, it allows you to do what? Pay attention to, if you can pay attention to costs and keep your costs down, it helps you to pay better attention to, my say the thing, no? <laughs> Price. <laughs> you whisper in it, like if you say, man, let me hear to, I mean, <laughs> we big adults, we equals in this class. <laughs> See, he's correct. It says to me, since the market, if you look at the CPM, the CPM tells you, well, all three of these people are high flyers. These are high flyers. All getting ratings are for me that in terms of market share, nobody really not getting the competitive advantage over the other. And the CP, the grand strategy matrix now tells you when you can assess, you can make a judgment. Based on the, the growth rate, the market seems to be mature. And you know in mature markets, margins are going to be very close. When you have intense competition, margins are going to be very close. So to make profits, you need to pay attention to costs, as he said. And once I start to pay attention to push it down by costs, as he rightfully whispered, <laughs> you need to pay attention. It helps me then to pay better attention to my price, because once I pay attention to price, what's the benefit? Increase sales, increase revenues, whatever you call it. And once I manage my costs, I am better able to increase my profits. And folks, that simple analysis is all I require of you. <laughs> you understand? I require nothing more than that. And do some little linkages here, a linkage there. And then what you could also do then, you could actually now flip up here. Short girl. I can flip here and say, but look, but when I look at Kigal now in relation to the industry, you all see what I'm saying here, folks? Well, let me look at my gross profit. Well, in terms of gross profit margin, the industry is better than them. But when I look at net profit over the five year, Kegel seems to be doing pretty well. When I look at their net profit in the current year, they seem to be doing much better than the industry. 
Are you put that in your analysis? So folks, you could actually put that if something like this comes in the exam. You can indicate when you assess the financial ratios, you realize that this Kigal seems to be performing in terms of its profitability much better than the industry. You all understand what I'm saying? So you can just flick up quickly, just a quick flick up. You can look at sales. You can look at sales. Quarter. And what did the sales at quarter tell you? What did sales at the quarter tell you? What did it tell you? Quarter versus year go quarter. The change in sales. What did the change in sales tell you? Sorry? What did it tell you? That. What did it tell you the change from quarter versus year go quarter compared to the industry? Right, it did not go as fast as the industry. Which suggests then that what? What's the desk? Sorry? That's about, but it's more, it's more about sales than the inventory. He said that not, the rate of change in that quarter is not as much as the industry. What is that telling us then? Sorry? Right, it means that, that maybe because of the intense competition, my sales are not going as fast. And it suggests that they seem to be doing better in their advertising and promotion than you. <laughs> but folks, I'm saying, but I don't have the answer. All I want for you to do is something like this. Give me an intelligent answer. You understand? Marketing and sales is a dynamic thing. So I don't have the answer. You give me an answer. Okay, somebody give me another reason why. Sales quarter versus quarter. Industry, greater really percentage change. Could be wrong. It could be a distribution problem. And if it is a distribution problem, what are you going to tell your client? You need to look at your value chain. And folks, you don't come with no absolutes, you know, all you're saying, it suggests, the information suggests that there may be a distribution problem. And hence, I suggest to you, sirs, and you can tell them that. You can say, I suggest to you, sir, CEO and board of CFI, that you might need to look at issues of value chain. You understand what I'm saying? You might need to look at value chain, look at distribution, look at things such as that. EFE, same thing, consultant, you are a consultant. Grand strategy, Given the following grand strategy matrix, critically analyze the results and suggest the most appropriate competitive strategy the company will utilize. As consultant, write the key points you would want to share with the board and CEO. Right? As consultant. That's your role. And consultants don't come with a template. When you come in my organization, I want to hear your analysis and your innovative suggestions. Because I don't want what, in other words, if you bring to me and suggest the same things for me, you suggest for the comp your other clients, but you're not helping me. I want unique. So what I'm saying to you students, all I want from you is critical thinking, analysis, and some innovative and creative solutions based on the theory and the concepts we know. Just what we did just now. It, it could be a problem with sales because there's a difference in your sales ratio. So if there's a problem of sales, your growth rate of sales, it means then that there might be a problem of distribution. Right? There might be a problem of distribution. It might be a problem that your marketing and public relations are not good enough. Because it could be different reasons why the product is not getting to market. Um, our production might have fallen. There might just have been something that happened. There was a Something happened in that quarter. There were serious technical problems with the production plant that the plant broke down and you could not produce as much goods as you wanted to. So it could just be that too. There was a break in production. Or the workers took industrial action that you did not give them a share option plan and the workers went on strike action, which is a human resource issue. But folks, I'm serious, you know. 
you understand? That is a possibility. That the plant was shut for industrial relations, hence, and what you're doing, you're now linking in to understand the importance of implementation and human resource management, of culture, of motivating workers, of industrial relations. So if a student goes that line, that's all they want. For you to show me you are thinking about relationships, you are thinking about issues. Because it's not, a company is just not run by finances. So just looking at the financial ratio table is one thing, but you could also look at possibilities of human resource issues, poor management, poor leadership. Workers are not motivated, hence production levels are falling. And we went through this, anytime you're looking at a grand strategy matrix, as I said, the first thing you pay attention to is your axes. Right. When you're looking at a grand strategy matrix or space matrix, you first look at your axes. And the x-axis deals with competitive position versus um, weak competitive position versus strong competitive position. And the y-axis Rapid market growth versus slow. So we know the company is around here. So what does it tell you about the company if it is around here? It is in a very strong competitive position, even though the market is tight and tends to be mature. And when you look, what would tell you it's in a strong competitive position? Well, let's go back, folks, and look at the CPM. Does the CPM confirm that it's in a strong competitive position? Yes, it does. 3.3, 3.3, 3.6. It's in a strong competitive position. So when you bring these kind of linkages, it tells me this student is thinking. They're looking at linkages. They're looking at relationships. When you look at its profitability with the gross the net profit margin, yes, you're doing well. You're, OK, your profit, it versus the industry five over a five-year period, right? The net profit margin current, again, you're doing better than the industry. Even though the industry gross margin was higher than you. So it, when you look at it, it says, you know, yes, you have some issues in your sales in your current period. And if it continues, you could run into trouble in that particular year. And when you look at it, sales over the five-year period, again, it's doing pretty well. You all see, folks? So so when you're looking at your grand strategy matrix to look analyze that, you can go back and say, well, look, when you look at the financial ratio table, it actually shows the company's profitability and its sales seem to be a little above the industry. So this seems to validate the point made in the grand strategy matrix. And the only other thing in the grand strategy matrix when you do that analysis, you need to know then, folks, what strategies are here. And this is one thing you have to learn by road. What strategies, and we know, in, what strategies fall in quadrant one? Market penetration, market development, all the, incent, all the integration strategies, diversification, nearly all falls in that category. And again, it's up to you then, in a very logical and rational way to suggest, what kind of strategies might I recommend to my client? based on its position, right? And again, I don't have a, a thing to tell you what to write. I just want you to logically and analytically argue a case why you might recommend market development, right? So if you want to suggest market development, Calista, why might you recommend market development? Why might you recommend market development for this client? Sorry? Go ahead. But it's very strong competition in the markets or domestic or it could be other markets too. So you need to further look to develop markets. And you could also argue, and there is a rationale for this. What rationale can you bring as to why market development might be the best strategy? What argument could you bring to argue? Sorry? What argument could you bring to, to support that market development might be a good strategy. Right. And you can go elsewhere. What else can I do? Where else I can go in this paper and find something like that? I can go here and argue then. But you know, 
Then I, uh, product quality could be an issue, but when I look at market share, Enhances the point about the nature of the of the of the market. Very intense and seems to be mature when you look at the grand strategy. But the CPM validates this thing is too tight. And once it is tight like this, my margins will be narrow. So I might need to look for other markets. So what kind of markets will I look for? I look for markets that are growth markets and if you want you can even draw a sign if you get a question like this with the product life cycle or market cycle that market is in growth stage show me you know your stuff <laughs> and then there will be a few there will be a few I always put in a few other questions, kind of essay type. There will be a few essay type. Um, but largely, matrices and things like that, you need to know your matrices, your IE matrix. I suggest you look at your IE matrix. And, that, and you will know about the IE matrix, your grand strategy and space. You need to know what strategies fit in those quadrants. Right? You can't guess. And you don't want to get mixed up in the exam, so you need to know them well. You need to practice them to understand them. Right? And I said that is from the 2010 paper. Right? Um, not a difficult paper, you would agree, correct? Easy, right? <laughs> What's that? Easy once you, once you know it. But that is it, yeah, right. But folks, I want, you all understand the point I'm making to you. This is not a paper that you can wait till a few weeks before the exam and read chapters and read notes and pass. It is not that kind of exam. You can read your book for 24 seven and drink Red Bull and everything on coffee and go and sleep. <laughs> you understand? I'm going to help you. <laughs> So what we did, in fact, what I'll do, I'll just maybe upload this. I think I'll upload this to the web later, later today. Um, but as I said, folks, you know, from, I, I'm, I'm comfortable from listening to you. I am comfortable. Just let me shut down here. So we, we'll close. Just get, I just want to do a little summary. Um, Past paper. So I'll also put up that little discussion we had there. 